Hey everybody, this is Kabayun, and tonight we are going to be doing a video about the virus TI, which is a classic synthesizer. It's one of uh, my favorites. It's really a workhorse, I think, in Psytrance production. Um, and it's the great thing about it is that it uh, comes with, it, it's a hardware synthesizer, but the TI means total integration. And so it has a VST that you can use to program it and control everything. Um, and so this really makes it a breeze to make some complicated patches, different kinds of routing. Um, and that's why it's really a go-to synth for a lot of people. Uh, so anyways, let's jump right into it. If I'm going to be going through a ton of stuff probably in this one. Um, and so if you have any questions, just note it down, um, put it in the comments, and I can uh, circle back to them in another video to answer people's questions. Or we can just discuss on the Patreon site. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull up an initial patch. Um, so I'm going to go to the just RAM A, and then here at the end we have uh, the initial patch. So at the start, I'm just going to be triggering it by playing uh, notes on my keyboard um, before we get into programming the MIDI. So the first thing that we got here, just to give a quick layout for those of you who haven't seen it, for those of you who have, just bear with me. We have the oscillator section here, one oscillator, two oscillators, this is stuff influencing how they work together, which we'll go into. Oscillator three here, you have noise, unison. This is the mixer where you can uh, go in between them. We have our filters here, um, our envelopes. This is the filter one. This is the en uh, amplitude amplifier envelope. And then you have other ones as well. Uh, we have our LFOs here, the matrix section for a more complicated routing, arpeggiator page here, FX1, which is chorus, phaser, distortion, this kind of thing, and then delay and reverb uh, and vocoder, which, um, uh, yeah, these ones are on the last page. Then you have some other things here if you want to um, transpose the whole thing, uh, change your outputs. This is where you set whether you're going to be using the virus as a using the USB connection like I have it here or taking the actual outputs um, you know, like the TRS cables out. Also, you have soft knobs, and if you have a uh, virus t um, TI Snow, then these will be really useful because you can control, uh, you can set any of these uh, parameters to these knobs, which is really useful. All right, so now that we've just gone over the quick thing, we'll jump into it, and you'll see how I use some of these things. The first thing to just go over is, so it starts out here in this classic mode. Um, in the in the oscillators, we have a bunch of different ones. I'm going to start out, and the first sound I'm just going to go through to give a little walkthrough is like a, a saw, a high-pass saw, which is a very kind of common sound for Psytrance. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I just want to see one oscillator, and it doesn't matter which one, we can go over and use this one, oscillator two. Um, so by putting the balance here, we're only going to be getting the second oscillator. So if I play you here, it's just a straight saw. Now, for this typical uh, high pass saw sound, um, basically it's just a, as I said, in the high pass with some nice, bit good resonance on this. And right here, just to show it for the beginning, we're going to go the filter balance. So I just want the filter, just one filter. Now what we're going to do is we're going to automate, or I mean, or just play, do some sweeps of the filter. Very nice. And I mean, as you can already hear, this is like the sound. Now if we go and I play different octaves, you can hear if I play one octave lower, you get this. And if I go even lower, duck, 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 duck. So you're going to get the the, diff, the um, frequency of the wave if it gets lower. Since it's a saw, you're really going to hear those tuck, 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 tucks separate out. And as you get higher, they're going to go together. So if we just do each octave. So we probably want in here somewhere these octaves. And then... Also, you could do a band pass with these as well. And then for this typical sound, basically what we want is we want some reverb. And I'm going to put some put the feedback up. I'm going to use just even a ping pong just to see what happens. And so now let's go back to the filter sweeps. 
Let's go to the high pass so we can hear it. And yeah, let's get some sound in here. Put a little reverb on here as well. Get a little more of the volume on the delay. Now you hear that we hear the low sound when we're here because I haven't put any uh, EQ on this. So if we go and then we'll want, we have this, I have it, it's not just the basic high pass here. And if we move this up a little bit more, then maybe we won't get as much of the slump. Well, let's not use this one actually. We're gonna go and instead I'm gonna just put on a, uh, Pro-Q 3, and just get rid of these other guys that I have, and we're just going to keep our high pass, that's fine, so now, So, uh, also just so you guys know that these, while we're talking about the virus TI here, these techniques can work with anything. So now this is the basic one, um, basic sound like this, where you just have a saw and you have um, uh, the high pass. Now other things you could do with this would be putting in LFOs to the pitch um, and that will kind of get you a different sound, which I'm gonna go into in another video. So I'm not gonna get into that here. Um, but this is a very, one of the, you know, the simplest type of patch you could have one oscillator with the, uh, going through one filter and not even using any modulation or anything like that. And just using your hands, uh, to sweep this through now, if you, and, and obviously you can use this, I can, I'm touching the actual, um, knobs on the real synth here. And, um, just to go over the, so we remember we have the, uh, envelopes down here so if you wanted to play with those on your sound as well but so that is basic high pass saw now what we're going to do is we're going to go into take the next step um with making another type of side trance sound which is going to be instead of using one saw wave we're going to be putting these fming them together so since we have um the we're taking the second one if we put the fm amount it's going to be this one going through this one and so we get we want the second uh, because that's the multiplying. So FM stands for frequency um, modulation. And basically, uh, if you take two different waves and you multiply them together, then you get more complicated waves, forms. So basically, that's what this is doing here. And we'll be able to hear what happens if I start putting the FM. Oh, so first, I'm just going to take my uh, filter, make sure it's down here. So we have our normal note. I'm also gonna turn off the effects. So we're back to just simple sound. So then we go back to our oscillator. So now the first thing we're gonna do is just start moving this FM knob here. So now if we're looking at an oscilloscope, you would really be seeing how these waves are going from simple saw to overlapping, multiplying, and forming more complicated um, uh, waves, waveforms. Now, there are a couple different types here. Positive triangle, which is going to be a triangle just up. And this is all about how the way that they're going to be multiplying together. And so, you know, just the great, you can just try the different versions and see what you like. Sometimes triangle can be better than positive triangle. Waves going to be, so let's do the normal triangle for now. Okay. Now, one thing, if you listen to it, you're gonna hear a little bit, and maybe if we pull up our uh, equalizer here, just to see, it's going to be moving a bit. There's go it's gonna be um, phasing in and out, and you'll hear just a subtle change to it. And if you watch here, you can see this is, mo is phasing. 
So the way to, that's because these oscillators are not synced to each other. So if we sync one to two, this is going to make sure that that doesn't happen. So as you can see, it's still moving a little bit because that's what happens with FM, but it's staying the same. Now if we take this off again, all over the place. So for our type of stuff, if you want it to track really well, uh, which means across different notes um, and, he, and, and sounding the same and not getting out of tune, then you're going to want the sync on. So, obviously, for anybody who's listening to Psytrance, this is getting a good sound. Now, what you can do here is play with, there's lots of different, uh, to show you the different waveforms here, we can, we're just in the classic mode. So if you spin this dial, you get different shapes from saw here to uh, sine wave here. And then when you're in a sine here, you can also then choose, it has lots of other different waves in this classic form. Um, there are also wavetables and other things in different modes we'll get to later. But so if we put them both to a sine, you're gonna get this kind of. Now, one thing we can also do is to get a little bit more difference between them is by putting one of these octaves down. And then we go up one octave. So that gives us a little more. Also, if we go up with this one, we're going to get the further apart they are, the bigger, uh, the more the FM is going to work. You see? Now this would be about where this is if the FM is all the way up. See, now if we go to about halfway FM, but we put this up more. So, um, so, and if you hear the difference again, sine for saw. So you're going to get different effects with these, and it's great to mix them in in a, tr in a, in a track. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, start applying some modulation to this. So first thing, I'll just go back to the sign just to hear it for a second. Um, no reason in particular. And what we're going to do here is, um, the first thing I want to do is I want to just kind of modulate this um, FM amount. So if we go here to the LFOs, we have multiple LFOs that have their built-in routings that you can take advantage of. You can also route them here with this one, or you can go into the matrix, select them, and then route them again. This way is great because you, it's it's uh, not just positive direction, it's also, it's you can go in both. So you can invert it. Excuse me. So, the, ne the type I'm going to make right now is I want to get some sample and hold modulation going on, which obviously, if anybody knows my music, this is, you know, my favorite thing to do. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to, um, we can try putting to SNH. Now, since let's put it to, say, a clock of one eighth note. And let's see what happens. Oh, sorry, we have to route it to something. So I'm going to route it to, let's just say, because I haven't even put a filter on, done anything yet, let's just go, or I haven't used it. I want to modulate this FM amount. So we can just use this one here. But actually, I'm going to put it in the matrix. I prefer to use the matrix. So we're going to choose LFO want, and we can choose bipolar or unipolar. I'm going to choose bipolar. And then we're going to do oscillator to FM amount. Put it up. So we're getting this to move around. Nice. Now if we put it to a 16th note. Okay, great. So some of you guys have seen my, uh, well, no, wait, first, next thing I want to show you is, uh, so let's go ahead and put that back on the eighth note just to not be going too crazy for a minute. And so we have the, um, oh, yes, we have, no, no, before I go into the, uh, that, I'm going to just go into a different way. So first of all, we have, this is putting sample and hold based onto a time division. So if I hold it down, we're going to get these movements. This is great if you want that kind of motion. But uh, as you guys have seen in the other videos, what we were talking about in the pigments and serum is having a um, 
a random that is for each note, not for a time division. That way, um, for each separate note, you get a different value regardless of, and then it'll change on the next note rather than in the middle of the note if that note is, say, longer than one eighth note if, like we have here. So in um, the virus TI, this is just this one random. So now if I hold it, it's not going to change when I play the keyboard, but every time I play a key, it's going to change. So this is, this is just exactly what we want. And so to get, um, you know, like something moving here, let's go ahead and let's add a, let's put a filter. Let's go to a band pass. Actually, let's just go to a low pass for a second with a little bit of higher resonance. And now what I'm going to do is um, also put the same one uh, random to the filter one cutoff. And we can, go, we can inverse them. So. so that's pretty nice. And now if we wanted to do the, uh, you know, my midi and note length trick, we have, this is an F sharp, we have our notes. Throw them in, then put our MIDI modifiers on. So now we're getting a new filter cutoff and FM amount for every note. Then we can use our density. Just putting the delay on, get a little wet. Always fun to mess with the re release. So let's go ahead and also, because we already have it, we could just... Um, Let's just use the same one just for the purpose of this and just give it a tiny bit. And it, just to hear it more. So basically what we've done here is just the FM2 um, uh, oscillator FM amount, the filter cutoff and the amplitude uh, sorry, the amp envelope release. So this is a super simple path, and you can always say it sounds super psychedelic. We can play with the density. Now, people often ask about how I like to do things. Now, one thing I might do on here is when I wanted to record this, I might then take the, de the delay off and um, then play around here with the density, get the one I like. And then I have my virus going to, in Cubase, you need to put it to a bus channel. So I have it to a record bus. And so the output of this is going to the record. And then I have an, a recording channel that I take the input from that bus. So if I wanted to record something in here, I just arm this track and just hit record. <laughs> So I have now just put it to audio. And the reason that I like to do this sometimes dry is because now, like, let's just see here if we wanted to just loop this part. So now I'll put a EQ here and then just, what was it? I had a ping pong delay. Something, I think it was on the eighth, something like that. So. It's a little too many of them, I think, at that moment. So uh, the reason that I like to do this by putting the delay after is because it's just easier to remove notes when you don't have delay tails going through everything. So let's just say, uh, let's break this down, and I'm going to chop this guy up by beats for now. And let's see. So we don't need 
not going to get into too much going on here just that i wanted to show you that the sometimes i'll take the things off to then do this kind of editing and we can go way more in detail in here we can fix a lot of things you just have a little bit of freedom if you balance the somewhat clean without delay without reverb um and then you can do a lot more chopping and stuff because if you do the reverb and the delay first sometimes it's just too wet and you really can't um cut and slice in the same way um and you can always add the reverb and delay later so all right that was side track. Get back onto track with our virus. So we go back in here. We are at the moment using the note length and MIDI trick from my other videos. But now I want to try something different. And so we're using the random to get our, SNA, our, our sample and hold um, rather than the timed ones because we're getting random notes coming in. Um, and so we can't predict where they're going to be, and we don't know what the time divisions of them are going to be. So we want to go with the note on rather than the sample and hold uh, beat quantized. So now the next thing I want to show you is how to use the arpeggiator from um, the virus, which also allows you to do things. So I'm going to move this guy and get rid of it over here. And now... I'm just going to I'm going to turn off my MIDI modifiers and my MIDI inserts so that every time I hit the note, we get our sound. So we are still now triggering every time I hit the note, we're going to get a different value. Here's something a little different while we do this. What if we, uh, if you want to hear the difference, let's put it to our saw. Also nice. Then also here, if we want to, we can choose other kinds of waves, and there's tons. But let's just go straight for the moment. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the arpeggiator. So there's different modes um, that are going to depend on the different notes played. I'm not actually going to be playing chords right now, so we can just put it, um, we can hit random. It doesn't make a difference uh, if it was up or not because we're not going to be playing chords and I'm not going to be playing different notes. Um, but these would go if you have, if you're playing, you know, like a, a C and a G, then up would go up, down would go down from them, up and down would go up, down as played, random, you get it. So, First thing here is if we choose random, and then there are a bunch of um, uh, patterns already built in. So let's hear one. Cool. Now I'm just gonna, I'm just modulating with my hand here the release time. Nice. Uh, you also, I, a lot of times when I'm playing with um, these types of patterns, I like to put the note length one to this, um, so then I can control this on the on the actual device as well, on the hardware. So uh, back to the arpeggiator. So there's a lot of cool different um, patterns built in here. And you have the note length, you have the swing, hold, just play it once and it'll keep playing. So we might as well turn that on. Different patterns. So, cool. I don't know 
why I'm saying cool so much. But <laughs> anyways, uh, the next thing that I want to show you is what is actually my favorite made to use this. If you go to user, it's going to start out and it's just going to be a very basic 16 note um, pattern. But what you can do here, and you, you can do, you choose the resolution of this here. And so I have it on 16th notes, and we put the note length up a little bit. Now what you can do is these buttons randomize it. So we can randomize the steps. Then we can randomize the length. Much better. This is much more what we want. And then here, we can also randomize the velocity. So now what I want to show you is a different type of modulation. So instead of using random, uh, which will have a ran which is working with the this. So each note here in the arpeggiator counts as a discrete note. So we're getting a random uh, value for each of these, just like we did with our MIDI trick. Um, the only difference is, is that this is going to repeat after 32. Um, it's not going to be perpetually changing like using the um, MIDI modifiers is going to be. Um, but one thing that's cool about this is if we, instead of using, say, random, and we go to velocity on, the amount here is going to be, so the velocity level is going to be the trigger. So if we now play this, you'll hear something quite different. And as you can see, it's repeating. And so here, if we get a high value, that's why we're getting now this high um, envelope. The release is too much. So if we put this down, so now a low, we just don't want to get so much variety there. And see the thing here is now if we just hit this and we randomize it, we'll get different patterns. So what I like to do is do a mix of some of these. I would rather keep the filter on the random and also this, the envelope release. But maybe we can put, do the velocity to make a pattern coming out uh, that we repeat of our uh, um, FM amount. So, as you can see, this is another way to, uh, and, and then obviously, you know, I'm just hitting random here because this is what I'm trying to show you, but we can, you know, you can t do whatever you want. You can get rid of these notes and make them into ties. You can make them, uh, you can change the length. You can do everything you want in here. You can make the pattern shorter if we wanted just one bar to repeat. thing I like about this is then you can just play a couple notes when you're and if we put a little let's get our delay going back okay so then so I'm just playing a couple different notes here and then I'm taking my fingers off. So this is nice because then you can actually play, but you have it a little bit, you can choose where you want to play them. 
but you know, you're making a long note and you're getting lots of little short notes. Okay, so let me check my notes here. Um, oh, okay, great. So basically now we've shown, I've shown you the random, the velocity on, and then of course we have our just basic, uh, if we were to go um, the sample and hold. Obviously, there are tons of other kinds of um, uh, things here. Like if we wanted to just modulate instead of, let's say, let's try putting this triangle here and instead of having, um, and let's go, let's put a clock on, say every two bars, it's going to go up and down. And we're going to put this one onto the, and so instead of velocity on, let's do the oscillator amount here. Um, going with the LFO. Oh, sorry, it's going to be LFO 2. Can't really hear much of a difference, but it's it's there. Um, anyways, so the next thing that um, I want to go into is, because um, obviously just play around with all these different things, there's a million um, different shapes and everything you can use. Um, the next thing I wanted to show is that in here, if, after, so if we have our sound, we also have some very nice um, distortion and other kinds of effects. So let's just play this. Go back in. different distortion modes. Some of these are going to change the sound a lot, as you can hear. So you can play with all these, lots of different variety in here. We have phasers, different amounts of stages. We also have the EQ here. This is pretty useful. You can set the frequency and it's showing you down here where the frequency is. Oops. And so there's the gain, the frequency. And so if we want to give ourselves a little more, a lot of times you want to put the lows down a bit and then give yourselves some highs and mids. Uh, we also have filter bank here, which you can do vowel filter, comb filters. These can get really crazy effects for different types of sounds. Okay, so we also, this this is basically a, um, we are using an FM patch here. And so now I just want to show you a couple things that we can go into here. There's lots of different waveforms. So here, I'm going to turn the arpeggiator off. So you just hear notes. Also going to just pull these things down to the middle so we don't hear as much. So to hear the different sounds, we have lots of different waveforms. Here. So there's tons of different waveforms. And so you can really get a lot of variety in these sounds. And again, as I said, if you put different amounts, you can really get different types of sounds. And you don't have to stay. I'm going 12 semitones up and down, but you can also go in between those uh, and really play around with different um, sounds. Okay, so now I want to show you there's also a wavetable here, and there's lots of different wavetables. And then here, what happens is just to show you if I... So now we're just going to hear one. You can scroll through the waveforms like this. So these are going to give you crazy if you're using them as FMs. Um, there are also, then we have different, there's wave pulse width modulation. So you can modulate the pulse width here. There's grain and formant. So I want to try playing with this formant for a second. 
So we've got, um, again, there's all these different waveforms in here. And then there's these things, the F shift, form it shift, and form it spread. So what we're going to do is put the spread up a bit. Actually, here, um, I'm going to put the FM amount out, and let's do this one. So no, I just want to go over here. Okay. So... Let me just hear different ones. Okay. So now here what we want is if we go into this. And so instead of having the, uh, I'm going to go back to the random here. Since we're not using the velocity at the moment, uh, the arpeggiator and um we're gonna put this to that so let's go oscillator one f shift and now we're getting different so you can hear we're gonna get a different f shift for each note That's this moving around. And we can play with the no F spread. Doesn't do so much. Now we're getting a nice sound. Also, and we've got our delays here. A little reverb. And so then now, if we put back our other guys. And let's go... Back to our note shift, um, MIDI and density, MIDI modifiers, bar, turn these guys on, a little too much reverb. Now we try different. These ones are pretty famous, these sundial ones. So. So this is that kind of glassy sound, right? Same principle. want a little more of that for sure so let's put our and maybe we want a band pass here So that is a how we make that kind of glassy type sound. And again, this is just using these same basic three things, only we're using it in a different way. Instead of using the FM amount and having two oscillators, right now we are just using one oscillator by just shifting it back over to here. And then we're modulating this kind, this, this, the F shift, instead of say the FM amount or um, one of the other ones. So this is a great way um, 
to make and and again these if you use this format there's also format simple and grain simple and complex that will do this in a different way but the one to get that this type of sound is by modulating this f shift and f spread a lot of people ask about that kind of glassy sound and as you can see it's actually very simple for, or similar to uh the basic fm type of sound you're just modulating different parameters um and you'll find that actually a lot of the different types of sounds you make are are very similar um, concepts of, of, of how you put the modulation together. It's just using different, um, you know, putting the modulation to a different uh, place in, and for that patch and um, using different types of oscillators. So let me just check my notes here and see because there was something else I wanted to talk about. Um, I, in the next video, what I'm going to do, this one I was focusing on this kind of thing using the sample and hold, but mostly the random, using the arpeggiator um, to make those notes as well, and then using the velocity on instead of that, and then you also have the LFOs that you can use as sample and hold clock divisions. So you have multiple different methods of doing this kind of sample and hold um, uh modulation on your sounds and then again you can either be using the arpeggiator in here you could write your own parts or you could be doing the midi modifier and density um trick uh that is one of my favorite ways to do it uh if you use the arpeggiator what i would say is that after you then um uh record out some part that you then go through and as I showed you before deleting some of the sounds just finding the ones that you want and deleting the other ones um, because that's a great thing about the MIDI uh, modifiers is that when you put the density at 20% you only get 20% of the notes coming through so you have a lot less to delete when you're going to use the arpeggiator you might have a really full um, arp there and you have a pattern that has a lot of stuff going on so you want to delete some of those later um, you also can make your arpeggiator um, your, your your sequence um, not an even um, number of bars long so that it will uh, shift. So if you make it, say, six instead of eight bars long, and then it'll take a few bars to cycle back to the very beginning, but you'll get a longer pattern that way and it'll change around. Um, but so that these are just different ways to do the sample and hold modulation. For example, also um, using FM or, say, using this formant um complex uh to do the put the modulation on the f shift as well um then you again here you know you can juice when you're done you get here go into this section and you can juice up your sound a little bit you can use the filter banks you can use the uh, phaser you can use the distortion to change how you want and then you have your delay and reverb here which again i will say that a lot of times when i end up recording this i will take these off and then do it at the end uh to my recorded audio that way i have a bit more um, maneuverability when I'm uh, playing with the recorded audio part. Um, so that is basically what I wanted to go through this time. Next, I'm going to do another video uh, that instead of doing sample and hold, does kind of longer manipulations where you get these kind of squelchy sounds. You'll find that it's actually very similar to this, just using different types of modulation and putting the modulation onto different things. For example, the pitch instead of the, uh, you know, filter frequency or combination of both. Um, anyway, so that'll be the next one. The next video focus on squelches and I'll do that in virus and I'll jump into pigments as well. Um, but thanks for listening. If you guys have any questions about anything, I know it was kind of rambling um, all over the place, but I just wanted to go through and show a couple different types of sounds that I make and I'm just going to play around for a sec while we watch and I can show you go back to it uh, to close out so as I finish up here just want to say thank you and uh, look forward to hearing please put your comments and feedback and I'm happy to answer any questions thanks guys so let's record this one and I'll show you something here so Oh, as I just said, I want to take off these guys. Boom, boom. And you'll see why in a second. Okay, so we've got that. First, I'm just going to put it to a new channel. So that's my record channel. 
So now, since I took off, and now it's just, I've got my instrument bus, just mute that. Now we have this sound. It's great because we still have the delay here. When I pull down, it just makes a duplicate of that track. Now this is why I want to do it, because I put the delay here instead of on the other channel. One thing that uh, I like to do is to make your sound, some of your sounds, especially like kind of backgroundy sounds like this, to swell in and out. So um, I used to use this great plugin called uh, Doctor Device. If you guys have used that, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to do it a different way here. Instead of using one thing, I'm going to just put on an LFO tool and show you guys that you can use this. If we put it, it has filter here. So if we um, put the routing, the LFO routing up on the cutoff here, put it to a bandpass, put the cutoff down, resonance up. Now, and we have to then slow it down. So you can see some of the notes are going to come through and some are not. And so this is basically just a filter moving back and forth across it. All right, so now let's go back to the virus and I'm just going to switch back to, I'm going to put a full long note here. And we're going to go back to our other sound. That was fun. Thanks a lot, guys. I know it was a long video, um, but thanks for bearing with me. I hope you guys learned something, and we'll see you next time.